is the thing about it with racism is that racism has never truly been dealt with. Yeah. The wounds have been patched up. We patched it up, you know, had a black president. We patched it up with certain acts and we patched it up. You know, I wouldn't necessarily call them progression, but I'll say some strides. Some strides. But those are band-aids. And at any moment, if that band-aid gets bumped too hard, it opens back up. Mm -hmm. And that's what we're starting to see. If you have any type of cut, if it wasn't stitched up properly, mm -hmm. and you try to do the, you know, the quote-unquote, you know, uh, ghetto stitch up, you know, do it yourself. That wasn't black community know I'm talking about. As soon as you bump that open again, <laughs> it's going to bleed worse than what it bled before. And that's because you never fully touched the wound. So I think that we have to have the conversation. And people have to have patience. I'm hearing a lot in our community and other communities who are allies who are saying, well, we have to stop talking. It's time to come together. Well, to come together, you have to talk. Mm -hmm. The reason why a lot of people who are racist are racist towards people of color is because they don't know us. They don't mm -hmm. understand us. Mm -hmm. And it's a lack of communication. And it's also, you know, a low self-esteem thing. Because to hate somebody and to be envious of, of another group or person means you have to deal with your own mm -hmm. self, you know, self-esteem. So there's only so much we can do in the people of color community to help those who are racist. They have to also heal themselves with what's going on. But we have to be an example, and that's why I created All Shades United, which is a solidarity organization to unite oppressed communities and communities who are not oppressed, which would be the white community, yeah. to join the solidarity. Not a colorblind group. We don't believe in being colorblind. Right. Being colorblind has contributed to keep us in where we're at, which means to see somebody and recognize, like, when I see you, I don't see you for a woman or a man. That's disrespectful, because mm -hmm. to love somebody means to embrace and to take in all of them. You can't say, I love you, Miss um, Cunningham, but... I don't like your hair. I don't like your eyes. I don't like, you know, like, then you don't like her or love her yeah. for who she is. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So we have to start getting rid of that. Mm -hmm. And the whole all lives matter mentality. As soon as we said, our arm hurt, here's another group to say, well, my knee hurt, my back hurt. To heal, we have to be willing to let others heal as well. Mm -hmm. And you can't tell us when to heal, how to heal. And you've been the one shedding the blows. Mm -hmm. There's no in denial to say that the white community, since we've came in this country, has caused the black community nothing but hell. Yeah. That's the truth. So we have to be willing to, they have to understand that when we do cry out, hear us. It's not your job to try to tell us how to heal. And once people are listening to our pain, then it's time to start patching up the wounds. Taking down monuments will not patch up the wounds, but it will at least give us some type of peace of mind. Right. You won't see a statue of somebody that's in prison right now that was caught being a sex offender. Where's their statue at then? Mm -hmm. Or somebody that was caught killing somebody, then give them a statue then. And name a building after them. You will never see a building that's called the so-and-so, so-and-so, uh, he was a molester academy. So so it's the same thing. These slave owners were rapists. They were murderers. They were evil people. Take it down. There, it shouldn't be no monument. Now, if that's going to be your hero, then that's something you got to deal with. Your hero somebody that committed evil acts. And as far as the, 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 the topic when you said as far as blacks that own slaves, those blacks that own slaves, I'm not justifying it, but it was nowhere near the comparison to white people. And it was a sprinkle and if anything, they were more like servants. It wasn't the type of slavery and trauma that we endured. So to me, that's not even a concern because you would never see, they better want to give us monuments with Dr. King and Malcolm X. We can't even recognize Malcolm X as a hero. So you know we ain't going to recognize nobody on no slaves. So that, that that's, that's totally irrelevant. But we need to work on and deal with is that these pains that we are facing in the people of color community, whether you be Native American, Hispanic, or black, we have to come together and heal but the healing has to be an honest conversation. You can't give us the blueprint on how we should talk and how we should heal. That's not going to work. Sure. But we have to go back to the basics and start to educate each other on what racism is. Some people, you mentioned racism, they think it's only using vulgar language, not realizing that it is a system in place. Yeah. So we have to ha be honest with each other and have the type of conversation. I, I really want to give you a shout out for the All Shades United. I love that. I, I really do. I think that's so, um, it, it's so refreshing.